Brother, you pray for us and we'll get started. Amen. This is all about salvation. This has been all about salvation. And yesterday you were challenged to give the gospel to at least one person before, before um, Sunday. Thank you. And, I, and I, I dare say that in the past weeks and months, there's been some of you who haven't had any soul really on your mind, just been going about your day-to-day -day business. And the reason that I say that is because of the lack of amount of hands that went up when I asked how many people have actually led somebody to the Lord. Um, in order to hit home runs, you got to take a lot of swings. You're going to strike out a few times. You're going to pop up a few times. You're going to hit some ground balls. You're going to get the first base. You're going to get the second base. You're going to get the third base. I've been there, third base. Thought I had somebody getting ready to get saved. Ran, slid into home. Out! Oh! I don't want to get saved or, or something. But you just, what? I don't get it. You, you, you understand this? You understand this? You understand this? You understand? Yeah, I understand that. Just, just not right now. My mom was one of those people. And I can remember, we, we, we witnessed, you guys are in the, in the spit zone. Um, I, was, I witnessed to my mother, and uh, I'm, I, I got a 13-minute message. I got I to gotta just get to it. But I remember witnessing to my mom. We, we brought her to church. We talked to her in the back, and she started crying. She thought that we were, like, on her. But I think it was a heavy, heavy conviction. She came to my house about three uh, four days later, and I said, Mom, did you believe all those things that we said to you? And she said, yes, I believed them all. I said, so why wouldn't you want to get saved? And she said, just not right now. And I said, okay, Mom, and I stood in the doorway, and I said, Mom, I'm going to come to your house tomorrow, and I'm just going to check. I'm just going to check, see if you want to get saved tomorrow. Then I'm going to come the next day, and I'm just going to check. I'm not going to harass you. I'm just simply going to ask you because I don't want to miss a day. I don't want you to go to hell. So every day that I'm home, I'm going to stop by, and I'm going to ask you, or you could get saved if you believe all that stuff, and then I could focus on somebody else. And you know what my mom said? She said, that makes sense. And then my mom got saved, amen? But nobody's going to get saved if you don't open your mouth, amen? Listen, listen, listen. Without salvation, there would be no RAM program. Raise your hand if the RAM program has helped you out. Without salvation, there would be no Pastor Kevin. Raise your hand if Pastor Kevin has helped you out. Without the RAM program, there'd be no Windward Baptist Church. How about that? Has that helped you out? And then I was sitting here, and we were singing these wonderful songs, and I was looking at all these people. There's nobody else in the, in the world, not even the people. They, they can watch it. By the way, it's good for you to come to church, not just watch church. Amen? Amen. You, you can't be in the spit zone from at home. Amen? So I was thinking, only us. Only us. We're the only ones that just got to partake in what we just did. And it was wonderful, amen? But we can't just keep that to ourselves. We can't just keep that light under a bushel, amen? Hey, you know what the five downer is? My grandpa used to ask me, you want a five downer? I said, what's that? He said, one, two, three, four, five, pow, downer. It comes with a knuckle sandwich, too. Oh, he's ready to go. He's ready. He's ready. He was ready to go. I'll see you after the service. <laughs> Proverbs 28, 18. Proverbs 28, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 words. Our text verse for the evening. Proverbs 29, 18. The Bible here says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. It's an excellent passage, but oftentimes misused from its uh, original context. I believe some may willfully misuse this. Some do it ignorantly. Some just to fit their sermon or their narrative or their story. Uh, the misuse of, uh, of Scripture uh, of this passage is dangerous. The misuse of any scripture is dangerous. Amen? Amen. We have to make sure we keep things in context. Context is, cre uh, context is key to uh, the Christian life and to Bible studies. Amen? Amen. Uh, 
lack of that distorts the whole meaning of verses and this verse. Instead, this verse sometimes is twisted to mean something else, and many Christians may not even know the original intentions and biblical purpose of this passage. The reading is often quoted from pulpits to say that we must have a vision for our life. We must have a vision for our bus route. We must have a vision for our school. We must have a vision for our church and for our lives. And you know what? I think those are good things to have. It's good to have vision in life, but this is not what this scripture is talking about. Instead, it is twisted sometimes to uh, be man-centered rather than God-centered biblical interpretation of God's relationship and God's holy word. This type of cherry-picking verses can lead to translating the Bible into anything you want for your benefit, which is dangerous. The Bible warns of it. Most people who use uh, this verse to promote church or personal vision never teach the proper meaning uh, as intended for years of my salvation, I thought that it meant something different. Or for, 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 for years of, of my Christianity. Uh, uh, it becomes clear that the intention of this verse is not about personal church or business vision. Instead, it is talking about a prophetic revelation of God. Uh, the vision being referred to here is about receiving a divine communication. Amen? And how can the people in your, hey, what's going to happen to the people in your community if they walk around with, a, if they put the glasses of divine communication on, what's going to happen to them? If they take off the glasses of this world and they put that on, they're going to change, amen? Your community is going to change, amen? But that cannot happen unless we open our mouths and spread the gospel, amen? amen. The vision being referred to here is about receiving divine communication. Uh, where there is no vision, uh, uh, where there is no divine communication, uh, from God, we see perishing. That's why we see marriages perish, not even just worldly marriages. Now I'm seeing so many Christians throw in the towel. I'm going to try this over with somebody else. What is that about? Amen? I could go on and on, but I, I, I'm going to stick to the schedule since we have some other stuff to do. We see relationships uh, um, perish between mothers and daughters and mothers and uh, sons and sons and daughters. We see freedoms perish. Amen? Amen. Think about all those people that are locked up just simply because they weren't in tune with God. Some didn't know God. Some didn't know him until they got to jail. But how many of them never would have went to jail had they had Christ? Amen? Amen. But another thing that kills me is I see so many Christians come sit in a church house, but they live just like those people in prison. They just haven't got caught yet. Shame. Uh, whether it be from a dream, revelation, or prophecy, the Hebrew word is used C-H-A-Z-O-N, and I'm not a good speller, Chazin. And, and when you, uh, and no shame in my game, and when you look up that in a strong concordance, in which I often do because I'm not a good speller and things of that nature, you know, I had so many learning disabilities and this and that. My mom did all these drugs, and uh, uh, I was the kid that if it was my turn right here to read, as soon as she started reading, I was acting up, so I'd get kicked out of the class because I didn't want to be picked on and made fun of. Uh, but after salvation, a man, I, told, I gave a Bible back to a man, and he said to me, hey, have you prayed about this thing of reading? And I said, no. And then I prayed about it, and then I was reading and comprehending. See, those are the things that um, um, God will do for you. God can perform miracles still. Uh, but had I never got saved, I never even would have looked to Jesus for that help. You see, it's so much bigger than you, and it's so much bigger than me. And it's so selfish of you, and it's so selfish of me to keep the gospel to myself. Because we have salvation, and there's no hell. Praise the Lord for that. But then there's so many more wonderful things that come with salvation. Amen? Right. Salvation is the gift that truly keeps on giving. Uh, whether it be from a dream, revelation, prophecy, the Hebrew word. Okay, we talked about that. Um, it, uh, in accordance, the Strong's accordance, it describes vision, vision, in aesthetic state, vision in the night, vision, oracle prophecy, or divine communication. Uh, when we examine scripture, we see the same word used in several other passages in the Bible. Uh, these references give light to the right interpretation of the word vision being used here. Uh, an example is uh, uh, in 1 Samuel 3. We don't have to turn there. I'm just going to read one quick little bit. And the uh, 
Child Samuel, you can if you want to. You can always turn. Anybody, anybody ever tells you you can't turn someplace, you need to hit the road. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. If we don't have direction from God, we will fail. So like I said the other day, we can't complain about other people in our communities. We can't complain about our world or our communities if we're not doing our part to give the gospel. Amen? Amen. Likewise, the same word used in... Uh, it, to introduce the prophetic books of Isaiah, Obadiah, and some of the visions of Daniel. From these scriptures, we can determine the meaning of the word vision and see how to apply Proverbs 29, 18. Ultimately, the term used in Proverbs implies a lack of God's revelatory word. In the Old Testament, God was still giving new revelations to his people, but now we have a blessed now we are a blessed people because now we have a complete word of God in our hands. Amen. Uh, through the Bible, no additional revelations are required any longer. It is made even more evident when we read uh, the reminder of Proverbs 29:18, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. However, many don't know about the law. There's so many people walking around these days, younger generations, that have no clue that we got. The fact that we shouldn't steal and we shouldn't kill and we shouldn't be, uh, 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 have uh, relations outside of our marriage from the Ten Commandments. There's a hand, there is a, there's a millions of people that have no clue. You go back 50 years, you go back 100 years, everybody knew. Everybody knew, whether they were a Christian or not. Amen? That's because we're letting things slip through the cracks. And you know what else we're letting slip through the cracks? Souls. Slip right through the cracks. We mustn't do it. We mustn't do it. We mustn't do it. I, let a, I, let, I gave the gospel to a man yesterday who had heard the gospel many times. I didn't know he had heard the gospel many times, and it, wasn't, it, it didn't matter. I gave him the gospel. He said he wasn't sure, so I gave him the gospel. He prayed. He made a profession of faith. Whether he got it or not, I did my best that I knew how to do, and that was that. There was two youngsters out there last night. Uh, uh, a preacher told me, a very, very wise preacher um, from Hawaii once told me with some glasses sitting in the back row, he said, uh, I'm trying to get the brownie point. He said, um, <laughs> he said, here's what you do with kids. With kids, anytime a kid needs salvation, you just got to witness to the kids. If they ask for salvation, you don't say, oh, you're already saved. You take them to the gospel. Maybe they didn't get it last time. Maybe they did get it that time. Maybe they didn't get it last time. Maybe they did get it last time. But we can't let anybody slip through the cracks amen? amen my man so uh you know the bible says how in, in romans 10 14 how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher how shall they hear without it's not talking about the pastor of the church it's not talking about the Sunday school teachers. It's talking about us. Amen? So it is my desire to spread the gospel and God's word and God's vision as well as compel others to do the same. That is why I hopped on a flight. That is why I came here to compel you, to compel others to come to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior and to fulfill the whole commission, not just leave it at that. Not just buy the flower and let it sit and die, but to continue to water it. Amen? Amen. You need to learn how to do that. You can, you can learn from her. She, 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 she inspires me. She does it. She's been doing it, and she's been doing it, and she's been doing it. Um, and there's others, but there's so many more here who have the potential to do so. Amen? Yep. Amen? Why is it him, and why is it him and her, and why is it him, and why is it her? Why isn't it everybody? Right. You're a good-looking young man. People like you. You don't have the same giddy smile that you had yesterday. And the there it is, there it is, there it is. That's what she does to him. <laughs> Witness to people. They'll listen to you. You're a cool kid. They like you. You're a cool kid, aren't you? You got the little hair, dude, little glasses. <laughs> Be cool for Jesus. Amen? Spread the gospel of our Lord and Savior. Hey, here's the thing. The lack of young men yielding to the call to preach. I'm going to skip something and just get right to this. The lack of young men yielding to the call to preach and the older men yielding to the call to preach is truly hurting our country as well. Amen. Has the Lord ever put it on your heart to preach men? 
God calls men to preach. We're supposed to be the husband of one wife. One time I was in this church, and I, and I said, has, any, has anybody been called to preach? And a lady slept her hand up, and I looked at the pastor like, what to do? And he started laughing at me. <laughs> and look, it just is what it is. The Bible says what the Bible says, right? Amen. God calls men to preach. Um, has he called anybody in this section to preach? What about in this section? What about in this section? And have you surrendered to that call to preach? And if you haven't, will you do it today? The lack of young people and the lack of grown men surrendering is hurting the country. Uh, listen, if God calls um, this young man to preach, that means God has a plan for him. And along the way, he's going to come across with some people and he's going to preach some messages that they need to hear to keep them on a straight and narrow, right? But what happens if he doesn't surrender or yield to that call to preach? He's not going to have that effect. We're going to be, it's going to be on somebody else, perhaps. It's time for you now, young man, to just chill out, buddy, or you're going to go sit out there. Amen? Um, so if the Lord calls you to preach or calling you to preach, you need to yield or surrender. Um, but praise the Lord for those who have surrendered. Another thing that hurts is, is people not giving to missions. Amen? Amen? We must give to missions so that other missionaries can uh, see their, their, their needs met personally and physically, but so that their vision that they have can be spread and that the vision that God wants other people to have can be had. Amen? Amen. So if God lays it on your heart to give, then you need to give. And let me say this also. I'll get to churches and somebody will have, there's the one guy in the church or 10 people in the church promised to, to, to give this amount of missions and they left the church in the right way. They got a new job or something, but they stopped giving the missions. If you make a promise, then you need to keep your promise for we are Christians, amen? But it's, you, some people can't even keep a promise because they never uh, uh, said they'd give anything in the first place. Shame. Hey, we should all get involved in this thing of missions. And if you're not involved in missions, you should talk to your preacher. If you don't understand, you should talk to your preacher. Amen? Amen. I don't know. Just give me an honest answer here. Do you think that God would not lay it on anybody's heart? Like anybody, you think there's one person in here God wouldn't say at least give 50 cents a month to or a quarter to or even a penny to? What do you think? Just, we're just honest. What do you think? I, th I, I think so too. I'm not God. What do you think, Pastor? So is everybody in here giving? We don't have to put our hands up or nothing. Is everybody giving? I'm talking about him. I'm talking about him. I got a seven-year-old son that gives 50 cents. Come on now. Um, this passage is talking about a revelation of God and his law given to us. When the people of the world do not accept the word of God, nor are being taught in churches or individual Christians not seeking the word of God to know him and his precepts, what happens is they cast off restraint. What this means is rather than regarding the word of God, they go their own way. They go astray and become lost in their sin. Amen? Uh, uh, many people also just don't meditate on the word of God. That's one of the reasons that we don't know how to spread the gospel because we don't meditate on it. And some just... Some of us are not living in a good uh, way. We got so much sin in our life, we're not thinking about souls or other things because we don't meditate on God's word and study it and learn and grow. I was talking to a, um, a young man, the Holy Spirit said, you need to witness to these two kids at the gym. So I did. I sat them down. They said, oh, we just don't understand the Bible. I said, oh, so you read the Bible? He said, yeah, but we don't understand it. I said, well, have you asked anybody about it? body about her? Have you did any studying? And I said, actually, don't an answer that question. But I'll, I'll tell you this. I know this for a fact. You guys play video games? They said, yes. I said, if you didn't understand how to beat a level, you would go to the University of YouTube and you would watch all the tutorials <laughs> until you got it down. If it took you three hours, that's what you would do. But you don't want to ask any questions about your eternal security to anybody. Amen? We must seek the truth 
that has been revealed and compel others to do the same. We must not twist scripture to fit in with self-seeking agendas. Instead, we must simply just be doers of the word, James 1, 22, 24, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Proverbs is also saying, blessed is he who keeps God's law or his truths. You know, yeah, I'm going to read this. Those who do not obey are called lawless. They cast off restraint. Uh, this restraint is the word and law of God. The casting off of restraint ultimately leads to destruction, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Amen? Those who do obey love God. Let me ask you this. If God loved you as much as you show that you love God, would you feel very loved? If God loved you as much as you show that you personally love God, would you feel very loved? We'll close with this. John 15, 9 and 11. Uh, John 15, 9 through 11 says, As the Father hath loved me, so I have uh, loved, loved you. Continue ye in, uh, in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. You see, uh, the Lord, or the world is looking for love, and they're going to get it from somewhere. They're going to get it from some girl. They're going to get it from some man. They're going to get it from some uh, TV show. They're going to get it from some worldly philosophy. They're going to get it from somewhere. Let's let him get it from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? So, A, do your, do, your, do, your, uh, do your part here in your city, or in your case, on your island. Do your part in uh, all the world by giving the faith promise missions so uh, missionaries' needs can be met and visions can be fulfilled. Subpoint B, be a witness everywhere you travel to. And then C, yield to the call to preach if God is calling anybody here to preach the word of God. Amen? Amen. Another reason people don't uh, witness the people is because they're not saved. I'm always amazed at uh, the people that end up getting saved throughout the year that, that most people always thought were saved already. So it's simple. I'm not going to give any salvation invitation. We're all grown people. Everybody here knows when you die, you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. Hey, little ladies, listen up just for one second. When you little ladies die, you're going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. When you young people die, you're going to go to heaven or hell. All the grown people in here, when you die, it's heaven or it's hell. Every head bow, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to preach this word here. If there's anybody out there that says, I am that person, and I'm not the preacher that says, I'm not going to call you out, I'm not going to do any of this, I'm not going to, I want people to get saved, amen? Is there anybody here that says, I am that one, with their heads bowed and their eyes closed, nobody looking around, I'm that one that is not 